All right, we are going to continue on with some parental controls uh, for the Chromebook. Uh, it's going to operate a little bit different than you would on a Windows or a Mac machine. Since it all is completely web-based, um, you're going to have really limited options as far as what parental controls are available to you. There's some that are out there. There's several that are out there in the Chrome Web Store uh, that are decent, uh, but they really, once you get past an elementary school age child, um, they really become ineffective uh, in, in what they can and can't do and really um, what the student can do uh, with, with the device and how they can get around it becomes much easier as they get older. Uh, so first thing we had done, we've gone into, we became the owner of the machine and then we added additional people. Um, there are going to be in the web store. So if you go into the launcher, you go into the web store, you're going to see um, some different parental controls. So, I mean, you can just search for uh, parental controls. And, and you're going to, to find some different applications um, that are available to you. Uh, parental controls from and web filters from MetaCert. This one, this one's decent. It works the way it says it's going to, um, but it, it doesn't give you a lot of, lot of um, granular control. And also, because it's an extension and that's all it is, then it's a matter of going into the extensions and turning it off. Um, there's not really a, a password that's needed to turn it off or to remove it from the device. That's why I say it's good for younger children um, who are going to be uh, less likely to seek out a way to, to get around it. Uh, the other one is going to be one that you saw earlier, which is called Bloxy. Um, and, and you can allow or block individual websites, or if you go into the options, web filters, then you would be able to put in the, um, the password and go in and look at the different things that are available here with URL filters, content filters, YouTube channel filters, keyword filters. So those are available to you. Here's the problem though. If I go in here, I'm going to remove from Chrome and remove, it's gone. So now all filtering is gone. Uh, so it doesn't take anything to, to remove the filtering. This is more for someone who is, who is wanting to protect themselves against things popping up that they don't want to see, more so than um, a child who is trying to circumvent a parent's uh, desires or safety settings. So it, it's not really advisable there to, to, to use those two. But they, they are available. Um, they do work, but it, it's not something that you're going to really um, utilize heavily in a middle school or a high school environment. So it's here and it's saying, hey, I'm going to stand alone or manage. Uh, you can go into managed and go that route. Uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to, to block it out, but it also is a little bit more difficult to maintain or, or, to, or to keep going. Um, so there's two of them that I advise using. The first one is going to be a system called Custodio, Q-U-S-T-O-D-I-O. So in Custodio, what you're going to find, uh, th this one I advise for people that are using a Windows machine, a Mac machine, uh, Android phone, a Windows phone, a Kindle, a Nook, or an iOS device. I don't really go this one for a Chromebook, and here's the reason why, because it doesn't work on a Chromebook. It works on all the other devices, but their Chromebook application is not available. They don't have it. Uh, it they've been around for about four or five years now. Uh, it's been on their request. They've said it's coming. Uh, they're working on it. It's difficult, and it is difficult on a, on a Chromebook since it's all web-based and application-based. Um, but they just don't have it for the Chromebook. So using this um, in a Chromebook environment is impossible. The reason why I'd say use it on the iOS or an Android device or a Kindle or a Nook uh, because it's much better than, than the next one we're going to talk about for those devices, for what those devices do, what they're designed to do. A phone's designed to make phone calls and text messages and be, be the social portal uh, for that student's world or that kid's world. Uh, so you're going to have different applications that are being ran on the phone than they would be ran on a Chromebook. Uh, the pricing on this, it is not a free service. Uh, so the pricing um, comes in at $55 a year for five devices, $100 a year, $97 a year for 10 devices. Um, 
you'll find these, that they'll go on sale all the time. There'll be a 4th of July sale. There'll be a Labor Day sale. There'll be a Thanksgiving sale, Black Friday sale. There'll be a Christmas sale. And so you oftentimes see these at $40 for the small plan and $75, 70 $75 for the medium plan. Uh, in my opinion, 45 even $55 a year for five devices uh, is well worth what you're going to, to pay for, for these devices or for what, what they do. Uh, what it does in a custodial environment, uh, you would install the application on the student's, uh, on your child's phone or tablet, um, and then it would not actually allow that to be uninstalled or, or removed without the parent's password. The only way to actually get it off is to do a full factory data reset and take it all the way back down to nothing. But even at that point, when you log in as a parent, you can look at your, your uh, admin portal, admin panel, and be able to see, hey, this device hasn't checked in. You can have it check in every, uh, you know, as, as little as every 30 minutes or you know, as long as every day or every week. It'll tag a, a location. It will monitor phone calls in and out. You can blacklist phone calls. You can go in as granular and tell it, here's what time that uh, this device can be used or what time that those particular applications can be used. It gives a time limit. It gives a shutoff time so that if you say, the phone can't be utilized after 10 o'clock at night, it's going to shut it down at 10 o'clock at night. If you say, hey, this application can be used, but it can only be used for an hour a day, once it hits that hour of usage, it's going to shut it down. Uh, it keeps track of, of uh, social media you know, interactions, uh, social media posts. It will record the text from text messages. Uh, it will not record audio from, from cell phone conversations. There's other applications you can do that. There are some legal issues with that. So you'd want to check into that before you get into it uh, for the legal issues and le legal ramifications of recording a phone call. Um, but I would go with this one every day for, for phones, tablets, or, or, Windows-based, Mac-based computers. Um, I haven't found anything better for it. I've been using it for several years. It has been very effective. Uh, and the things that it can do for the price point that you're paying it is well worth it. Now, onto the Chromebook environment. There's another one called MobiSip or MobiCIP.com. Uh, it will also run on Android devices and iOS devices. Um, I haven't found it to be as user friendly or as robust as Custodio is for those devices. It's a little more um, clunky to use on those types of devices. So that's why I wouldn't advise using this one. If you only want to buy one instead of buying two of them, then go with MobiSip. Uh, but I have found that Custodio works much better on the phone than MobiSip does. MobiSip is also a paid service. So if you look at their pricing structure, they do have a free service. Custodio also also has a free service. Um, it's one device. Uh, you don't have as many granular aspects to it. You can't go as far detailed uh, in the free service, but there is a free service with Custodio. It's limited to one device, and it's not as robust and doesn't have as much uh as many features in it. Uh, MobiSip has a free service, predefined filtering levels, but you can't really get into granular whitelisting of certain websites or certain applications. Here, it's, it's $40 a year for five devices. Again, well worth it. Um, and so once you get into setting this up, um, We'll, I'm going to go through and show you how to set it up. Uh, you would you would put it onto the device. You would put it onto you would log into that student's account or 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 uh, the first time that you go in, you can force the application to install from from the admin panel of your Chromebook so that it has to stay there. If they attempt to remove it, uh, you're going to get an email immediately that it was removed. That's the point when you can have a conversation. Uh, if it gets beyond that point where, where they're removing it and you're not getting notification or they're continuing trying to remove it to bypass filtering services, then there are uh, additional steps that we can take. But you know, setting up that open line of communication with your student would be the first one of saying, hey, this isn't really to, to torment you, but rather to protect you from the things that are, that are coming around. So I'm going to go into in the next video, show you how to set that up, what that looks like on the inside. Um, 